Hello everyone, it's me, Mr. Sneaky, and today we're going to be covering Fragar, the new hero in the game. My actual favourite new archer in the roster. So then we'll go over her skills, everything to do with her, as well as how to obtain her, in a full first impression video on Fragar. So stay tuned for everything you need to know. Hello everyone, if you enjoy Call of Dragons content, smash a like, comment and subscribe. I'm here giving you guys daily videos all the time and we live stream three days a week at the moment. Hopefully we're going to try and increase that, uh, maybe to four days. But with all that said, let's get into my first impressions of Fragar. There is two new archers, obviously we've got Fragar and Sindrion. Sindrion's going to have his own video, so if you're looking forward to that, just wait for it. But Frega is today's hot topic and she is very, very hot uh, merchandise right now. Why? I'm going to say early on, arguably one of the best commanders, if not in the very top three commanders in the entire game right now. Absolute bonkers on what she can actually do. So when we look at Frega as a hero, she is a flying hero. So for the marksman, it allows you to actually use her with the Wilderberg flying unit and you can pair her up with someone like Craig or Fia to maintain that flying maneuverability. But when we go over some pairs, we're gonna explain the pros and cons of all of them, right? But Having that flying subtype on her is a massive game changer when it comes to her kit. Because when we expected her kit to obviously get only a certain amount of little buffs and maybe a peacekeeping buff, when we go over her skills, you'll realize all four skills are PvP oriented and they do not require any sort of weird gimmick, right? So that's why she's going to be one of the top, if not the top pick as a archer investment. So if you're looking for an archer match, maybe in the future, definitely save your heads because with your legendary hero tokens that are not the season one custom tokens. So if we just go into the skills right now, any legendary hero token, these can be used on your season two heroes. So any of the custom season one or season two tokens obviously can be um, used on selected heroes. But if you're trying to get her out maxed really quickly, obviously stack up on these um, sculptures because the only way to obtain her right now is through the lucky spin or if you are in a brand new season what does occur is the wheel of destiny event this event allows you to spin three arrows if you increase the spin rate costing you three obviously tickets but by hitting the spin it will allow you to hopefully either get Sindrion or Frega. There's obviously some extra heroes on the Wheel of Destiny, but we've got our own video covering that. So if you want to check it out, you can go and check that out. But that is the ways you can obtain her. Everything we're going to need to know. If you're going to invest into her, I definitely would. The reasons is simple. Her skills are immaculate. Honestly, they are very, very strong. So her very first skill has a little typo error. It does say the very far attack range. This isn't true. We've been testing through. It still has the medium attack range. So just keep using it as a normal archer march. But it does a 600 single target DPS factor. But it gives you a 7 seconds duration buff of a normal attack crit rate bonus of 60%. So that means... More than one in two of your autos should be critting. This is an insane buff when we start looking at what she wants to do with her skills. Because her skill two is a 15% normal attack damage buff with a nice 15% defense buff. But you can already see here, we have already 15% extra normal attack damage to be abusing that extra crit rate bonus. But when we go to the very, very third skill, this is what makes her almost 
absolutely insane. The numbers here is what is terrifying to see. You get a 30%, guys. 30% is an insanely high number because when we look at base critical damage, it appears a base critical damage is only between um, either 15 or 25% damage. So when you hit a crit, you're only hitting that little bit extra on top. But if you're hitting between 140% and 150%, so that extra 50%, is a large leap exponentially in the damage you deal. So having a 30% normal crit rate damage bonus is absolutely key to this match, especially when we have the 50% normal normal attack and then we have that 60% crit rate bonus. So as you can see within the first three skills alone, she is all about hitting as hard as possible, as consistently as possible through her normal attack hits. The sync 100 skill damage factor here is a very nice skill damage factor. If you want to compare it to something, it's very, very funny. It's the same amount of damage almost as a Guan Win. So it's Guan Win skill instantly with 200 less damage, but you get all of these insane buffs on your march. When we go to a fourth skill, and this is nice, a nice roundup skill, is a 30% march speed bonus and a 20% rage accumulation speed. Um, reduction on the target guys this is so if you're fighting someone especially if it's a mage or a fellow archer that's not running fragar you're reducing that target's rage accumulation speed by 20 percent that means they're going down a fifth slower than you so you are going to beat them to that punch every single time when we do look at an awakening skill this is going to be the thing that's a little bit lackluster in my all honesty the only thing you're gaining so far when we read this is a 200 damage increase. We still get the 60% crit rate. We still get the 7 seconds. But the only difference that we can see here is the target legion takes 200 more damage. Obviously, maybe in the very, very, very late game, this might be irrelevant. But when we look at Frega, and this is why, honestly, she is going to be, guys, that... S++ hero in my eyes as a archer hero is because of her skill setup. Because we already know we're going to skill max that first one. Her next two and three skills are so important that you can go 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one and be great. And you're happy because you're getting that massive punch that follows with that skill one. But... Which is even more better is you're gonna go five 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 one, and being triple five one means you're gonna get everything out of this kit that you actually care about. You're gonna get all the damage that you're gonna to need to kill those targets, those pesky mages that are trying to run rampant, and even those behemoths, guys. She is gonna be most likely a top tier raid meta pick when it comes to Behemoth Slaying, because of the amount of normal damage she is going to be pumping out. So that is my opinion. She's going to be, hopefully, as a first impression look, one of the best triple five one commanders in the game. Why do you want to only triple five one? Obviously, maybe a whale will increase this to get it maxed out. But having triple five one, you have all the relevant damage stats that, and defense bonuses that you need that when you have a one point into this, you've got to think, guys, this is going to cost you almost um, 75 plus 75. That's 150 plus another 80 and 80. That's another 160. That's nearly 300 sculptures, guys, just to max this skill. And that's to get you that 200 damage factor. But with those 300 heads, you could be using them to invest into Syndrion, into possibly another triple five one commander. It's up to you depending on what he's going to be used for, but that is just an option, right? You could even triple five one a Kanara, you could triple five one even your Valen, for example, or even your Emery's, 
as another example of all different heroes that you could potentially be triple five wanting instead of expertise in that Fragar. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it so far, this video. Smash the like, comment and subscribe if you liked my in-depth analysis on her skills as well as my first impressions and investment choice on her so far. We're going to go over some of her pairings right now and then we're going to just give you guys a little teaser, a little glimpse into the talent build that I'm going to be testing on her for the first round of testing. So when it comes to pairings, we can do one amazing pair already, which is going to be Frega and Nico. This match is pumping already and an insane amount of damage in Dragon Trials for me when I'm going against all those units as well as those patrols. So I can imagine this again in the raids to do just as much damage. Why? Because we have a 20% normal attack damage bonus here and on top of that, we're reducing the target's defense by 15%. So having that reduction as well as the critical amplification that we have now is going to send Nico into overdrive obviously we can have nico as the primary and we would be running one of those rage generation builds for a nico primary if we we're going to do that with our frega but another pairing we could run with a frega primary for example could be a craig craig is going to allow you to have a complete flying march with the wyvern riders and another phenomenal hero even for free to play low spenders that could be even five 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 one very similar to fragar because you're going to get all the damage you're going to get all the hero skill damage and you're going to get all the bonus stats on that march that you care about obviously when we awaken and we have a level 40 craig it sends you into overdrive dealing in an absurd amount of single tag and aoe damage with your bleeds and the extra targeting on the main skill so that is another powerhouse that's going to be in a watch you could also potentially do a guan win why guan win is an excellent single target dps hero especially if you're a free to play low player you're going to get those damage bonuses as well as the 10 percent increase to all damage meaning guys that crit is going to hit 10% harder. That is correct. So this is another match that could be secretly one of the strongest single target behemoths. We're going to be testing them all out as well. And then a final little teaser if you're looking for it. Obviously we can go for Kanara builds with um, obvious intentions. We're going to go a bit more in depth in that. But another one for you is fear. Fear with her is going to be scary. Why? You're going to give your march that 1k shield. You're also giving them that 15% hero skill damage. Which means your actual skill 1 will be hitting now for around 750 damage base. Which is a nice increase. Almost the um, awakening for just sapping on that fear and with that fear you're gonna gain the attack bonus as well as hero skill damage taken reduction making your march tanky you get the complete buffs here if you're a super whale and you've got all obviously the buffs increase so you get that 20 and 10 percent attack bonus 20 percent march speed on the flying units and then obviously you're gonna get a nasty 30% maximum attack bonus meaning that match is gonna hit absolutely like a truck guys so a really interesting build so a few pairings that you can do there's gonna be a few more obviously that you're gonna be wondering about and you could obviously argue about in the comments so that is though some of the different obviously t pairings that we're gonna be using and testing when we come to Frega. obviously when it comes to your um, artifacts, there's a bunch of artifacts you could be using, Shadow Blades, Viola's Bow, and the new Rattle Spear, as well as even the Archer Mastery Epic. Yes, because the Archer Mastery Epic, guys, is going to be sadly underrated for a free-to-play player, but you're going to get a 20 second, 25% attack increase buff, which is going to, again, increase the amount of normal attack damage and critical damage you're dealing 
with your March. So it might be a nice little free to play subsidiary as well as obviously using like Heart Piercer and Bomb Flinger. So just to give you guys a nice little heads up. We're going to now just go over a quick talent build that I'm going to be running. And as you can see, we're going down the marksman tree here. And obviously, everyone might consider using Steady Shot. But I'm going to say to you guys to not use this. Even though you might think that free marksman range is a lot. Obviously, it is a lot when it comes into raiding as well as PvP. Because it means you're in a shorter range. And you're already shorter than a lot of marches. So the damage increase could be a payoff maybe if you're a... Um, a whale or you've got really high stats with your tech because you've been playing long enough but for us we're gonna go down the intimidation so we're gonna have a nice bit of normal attack we're gonna have the skill damage and then we're also gonna go for bullseye meaning that we get a bunch of a attack increase as well as normal attack which reduce um, gets reduced every time we launch one but we gain this stack as well so it's a nice thing that we're going to gain in combat in pvp up and down when we're fighting and then we will be going up to get the rage generation that we were missing nice little bit of regeneration to fill out the march and then again we're going to decide if we get targeted a lot guys we might go for last word but if we're feeling a little bit ambitious and we're going to try and be greedy and try and kill as many units as we can we're going to go for harvest to increase the amount of attack that we get to a maximum of five percent when this is maxed out and then finally we can either use pursuit because pursuit is again increasing our normal attack damage so this is going to again increase that critical damage if you want to be a little bit safer burst shot is a fine choice but for me frega i'm going to use pursue i'm going to try all in in on the normal attack damage because if we could increase our normal attack damage by 10 percent then get the critical damage on top it's going to hit even harder every single time from there what we will be doing is going into the mobility tree we're going to get the march speed we're going to get the attack and then again we're going to get the normal attack to give us as much damage as possible and then finally we will be finishing with preemptive preparations so we get a massive 10 percent attack increase at the start of any fight obviously this is really good in a raid at the start of the raid but the longer the raid goes this is obviously going to become not usable but it's going to be really good in PvP too. You're going to be able to get in and out of fights really easily with a flying march. So you're going to get uh, taken advantage of this 10% attack increase every single time. Finally, I'm going to put either one point in the extra skill damage or the normal attack or even the march speed just to give us a little bit more extra march speed on top. But the last point in here doesn't really matter. It's going to be up to your preference. But that is the march and talent page that we're going to go over and trial for the first time. We're going to see how effective it is. If you're wondering, again, you can just rewind the video, check it out. Everything will be timestamped for you. But that is, guys, my first impressions of on Frega. Frega, honestly, I love her. She is honestly my favorite archer hero now by a landslide. She is taking the number one spot. I can't wait to get her up. We're going to get her at lock her at she is and just level these skills up so that we're going to try and get her to five five you know triple five and then one which is going to be a nice addition to the march obviously we're going to wait for the lucky wheel and see how lucky we get to see how far we can upgrade her so if you enjoyed today's video smash the like comment and subscribe to the channel guys i hope you've enjoyed today and my name is mr sneaky an official call of dragons content creator we are growing every single day as a community and i see you guys helping each other out in the comment sections which i love to see and if you've got any extra questions obviously plug it down below if you're looking for a discord server guys as well we've revamped the discord so check the discord link out too we're going to be trying adding some builds into that very very soon since the new discord looks quite snazzy i must say so with all that said i'm going to move on to the next video so stay safe stay sneaky peace out